final power, and if you're going to call it democratic, needs to somehow rest with the people. Uh, and representative democracy, which technically is a, is a republic, um, but it is a form of democracy because since the people elect the representatives, theoretically, the people are still in charge. Direct democracy, where everybody's voting on everything that they want to vote on, that's also the people are in charge. Uh, and the kind of system that we're advocating of creating microcosms uh, to generate public wisdom, uh, that's another, the people are still in charge. Uh, so all those different forms, that's to me the bottom line uh, with democracy. Uh, and part of what's wrong today is that the things that call themselves democracy, there are many ways in which the people are no longer in charge. Somebody else is in charge. Uh, so that's why it's a hot issue today is trying to get beyond being just a democracy in name and become a democracy in fact, where people actually have the power. Uh, there's a whole other dimension of democracy, which we recognize, especially because of our focus on collective intelligence and wisdom, which is if you're trying to deal with an issue that affects all of us, uh, we all have different experiences and information, different perspectives, that would be that if they could be integrated well would create a better decision than if any one of us came up with some answer by ourselves so the fact that you're actually giving decision making power and decision making process to a wide spectrum of people rather than having it controlled by you know a particular religion or a particular corporate echelons you know corporate powers particular segments of society special interest groups they will always, if you have a part of the whole, controlling the whole, they will always use that power to benefit themselves rather than the whole. Uh, you might have a philosopher king that is uh, really good to have, has centralized power and does all the right things, but then the philosopher king's brother kills him and you know there's a revolution and <laughs> you don't have your philosopher king anymore. So it's much safer to have some process, some system that... Uh, can do the philosopher king function, but yes. isn't one person or isn't a small it's everybody. Uh, so how do we, most of the time when people get together to discuss public issues, they fight about it. And our systems are built on fighting together. You know, different parties, partisans battle to see who wins, uh, do compromises, whatever, rather than let's get all the different perspectives together and help them work together so that they're actually cooperating and using whatever gifts they each have to bring to the issue, uh, help them come up with something that they actually look at and go, yes, this makes sense to all or most of us. Uh, and we have the capacity to do that now. So we are... Uh, the, the ability to generate collective wisdom from groups of pe diverse people, uh, in a sense, is a technical advance on something that was theoretically part of why democracy was set up in the first place. It's not just a matter of power. It's a matter of collective intelligence and collective wisdom. You have more different viewpoints. All of us can be wiser together than we are separately. And instituting, instituting that understanding into a political system as part of what democracy is about. Uh, and so we just think there's there's leading edge new ways of doing that. Uh, so democracy is both about power and participation and the generation of quality decisions uh, for the benefit of everyone. So that's those are the pieces that I see in democracy. Tom, uh, maybe one final question. Uh, considering the way in which uh, modern nation states have evolved during the recent decades and the way in which representative democracy has spread it dramatically all over, all over the world. Do you believe maybe uh, the concept of direct democracy in the current contemporary uh, global settings is just an illusion or a very difficult task or maybe it is a possibility uh, within the direction some nation states are taking within these explorations that you have been working with during the last years and so on? Um. I, I think part of the reason things spread in today's world is when elite power can see how they can control it, uh, part of democratic institutions. Uh, and part of, if you have a dictator, mm -hmm. 
multinational corporate power and the United States empire or any empire love to have centralized power that they can work with directly if that centralized power is on their side. And if you centralized power is not on your side, you want to overthrow it so you can get somebody who is on your side. But watching a number of the revolutions of the last 20 or 30 years, uh, it felt like after you watch what happened, there was a nice, a nice overthrowing of somebody. And then a system was set up, which basically corporate elite power controlled uh, or could manipulate well. Uh, so I think that there ultimately our hope is going to lie in my perspective, in helping empower, both empower and make wise our collective democracy, both the direct democracy and the deliberative democracy. If we can figure out ways to do those really well and that the people who create these revolutions look beyond overthrowing the bad guy, uh, you know, most of these things are just regime replacement uh, if they can look beyond and create the, the wherewithal, the knowledge and the capacity to put radically better institutions in place and give them last power to generate good decisions for everybody, uh, I think there is theoretically some hope for that, uh, but it will take a lot more uh, knowledge and discipline and different kinds of visioning. So I'm, I'm very happy to have your, you know, the kind of inquiry that you're bringing into this, the more of that that there can be, the better chances we have of having the people who are there making the changes in government make changes in government that actually work and that can last and empower people and fulfill that great vision of what democracy is supposed to be, which we're still struggling to find. <laughs> okay, Tom. Uh, do you have any other thoughts, maybe um, considering uh, the future direction of the Cointelligence Institute and uh, and I don't know, something regarding the current uh, situation of uh, democratic regimes all over the world? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I, a lot of my attention right now is on the giant issues that embrace us all. Climate change is a really good example of such an issue. Uh, you know, peak oil is another. Uh, there are certain technological developments that work that are coming up the line, nanotechnology and biotechnology kinds of things, the uh, surveillance state. Uh, these are issues which are global and shared by everybody. Uh, and I am hoping that those issues, the, the fact that they are so giant, they are so all pervasive and uh, if we don't handle them well, could totally wreck our civilization or even our ability to survive as a species. The fact that they're so giant, uh, some people call them existential crises, you know, uh, that that level of issue will cause people to rise to the occasion and do the kind of organizing that will seriously transform the systems instead of just figuring out what will benefit people now, you know, or what will solve this piece of the problem now. It's like we need seriously it's a, there's a, a little way that revolution with the parentheses around the R so it's both revolution and evolution you know it feels like that kind of consciousness needs to happen because we're facing extinction level issues and if we don't do this well you know we won't be around uh, and so I'm hoping that 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 uh, level of challenge will cause us to rise to the occasion to actually make the changes that are needed at a systemic level but who knows uh, if we don't succeed, we won't be around to know it. So, so that's that's most that's my my own consciousness is very much right now connected to that the dynamic tent. Hopefully, we'll do something creative with that. And I want to invite people to the co-intelligence site, cointelligence.org, uh, preferably with a hyphen between the co and the intelligence. Cointelligence.org is a uh, has lots of this information on it, and it also links to both my books and to a website to a um, blog that has more current information in it. So if anybody wants to explore this further, there's lots to explore. Tom, many thanks uh, for sharing with us uh, your thoughts and your time. So we certainly hope to know much more in the future about the Cointelligence Institute, about you and the way in which these explorations on the concept of direct democracy or enhancing 
uh, democratic procedures uh, take their way in our societies and systems. So, thank you very much for having me. I enjoyed talking with you. Thank you, Tom. Good Goodbye. luck. Bye-bye.